Hi guys, Gilliam Elliott here. Today I want to talk about why some medical tourism facilitators fail. Now when you first get into medical tourism, especially if you have no prior knowledge of it, you can make a lot of missteps. And I'm not going to cover all the missteps you can possibly make because there are a lot, but I am going to cover some common ones. Now when it comes to starting a company in any industry, there's going to be a learning curve, especially medical tourism because it's a very unique industry. So if you're a sole founder of a company, or let's say you have a co-founder, the success of your company, especially in the early days, is going to boil down to the information that you obtain as a founder and your co-founder has. So if you guys know a lot about medical tourism and you guys understand your market and you understand your customers better than anybody and you know how to market your company and get in front of your target audience, you guys are going to do great. But if you have a limited amount of knowledge about medical tourism and your market and your audience that you're targeting and your co-founder has a limited knowledge and you guys have no prior experience in the industry, it's going to be hard for you guys to grow and get your company off the ground and your company's success is going to be limited. So you as a founder really need to understand what you're doing in the early days because the early days is going to dictate how your company grows, how fast it grows, or if it gets off the ground at all. So you as a founder and a leader, you're going to have a lot of responsibilities placed on your shoulders and you need to understand how to handle those situations. And the only way to understand how to handle certain situations, especially medical tourism, is by studying what works and what doesn't work. So information is always going to be the key and the founder has to obtain as much information as possible when they embark on starting a medical travel agency. And the second reason why I see some medical tourism facilitators fail is because they don't set the business up for success. And what I mean by this is they try to cut corners, skip steps. And when I mention that some people get into the industry and they skip steps and they cut corners, what I mean by this is they'll jump into the industry. They don't take the time to study what works and what doesn't work. They don't get a fundamental understanding of how medical tourism works. You'll see some people who just want to jump into the industry, make a few bucks and see where it goes. That's not what makes success in the medical tourism industry. You have to come into the industry understanding that there's a lot of things that you might not know, but you have to be open to learning those things. So when you first come into the medical tourism industry, you have to come in with an open mindset, understanding that there's a lot of things that you may not know and a lot of new information that you may be receiving. And then once you learn that information, you need to be able to put that information into practice. So medical tourism isn't an industry where you just jump in and try to make a few quick bucks and see where the company goes. You really have to be strategic about your plan and execute on that plan. And one last point on this topic of cutting corners and skipping steps and not setting the business up for success is I've seen individuals get into the medical tourism industry and they'll say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to put up a website. I'm not going to do any marketing. I'm just going to set up a Facebook page or Instagram page and run my business from there. That's not how you run a medical tourism facilitation business. And unfortunately, those individuals find out the hard way that's not how you run a company in the medical tourism industry. And the third point is getting stuck in the research phase and not taking action. Now, as I said earlier, the company can only grow as big as the founder and the co-founder, right? So the more information you know, the bigger your company is going to grow. And if you don't have a lot of information, your company is not going to grow very big and it's not going to grow very fast. But what I'm saying with this point about getting stuck in the research phase is I've seen people spend years researching medical tourism, pulling information off of Google and off of Yahoo and from different sources and getting conflicting information and not ever taking the information and putting it into practice. The best thing to do when you're gathering information on a topic like medical tourism is to gather it from one source. You're gonna have your most success when you pull all your information from one trusted source. But when you're going on Google every day or every week and you're pulling all these different articles and getting all these different statistics from this resource and this resource and it doesn't match up and you're confused about what works and what doesn't work, it's going to take you a lot of time to sort out that information. You need to go to one source, get all your information from that one trusted source and utilize that information and put it into practice for your business. But don't get stuck spending years in the research phase trying to figure out every little detail before you start your company. You're not going to have it all figured out in the beginning. And this is where a lot of people hurt themselves. You need to gather information and you're going to have to learn as time goes on. As you're building the business, you're always going to be constantly learning. You can't gather every single detail as a founder before you take any action. If that's the case, you'll never get started. And I've seen this so many times and I don't want this to happen to you. And the next reason why I've seen some medical tourism facilitators fail is because they spread themselves too thin and they try to do everything on their own. Guys, as a founder, there's a lot of things you're going to have to delegate. 
And this really boils down to knowing yourself. You're gonna have to know what you're good at and things that you're not good at. If you have no prior experience in marketing or you don't have any idea how to market and get in front of your target audience, you need to delegate that. You need to give that task to a trusted professional and spend your time on other tasks that your company will benefit the most from. And another way I've seen medical tourism facilitators spread themselves too thin is by focusing on a lot of different destinations. When you first start out, you wanna focus on one to three medical tourism destinations where you send patients, but if you're focusing on 10, 15, 20 different countries that you're sending patients to, you can't market your service efficiently there because you're so spread out and you're doing so many different things. And in the beginning, you really wanna focus your attention on a limited amount of things, but make sure that when you first start, you're not spreading yourself too thin and you're not working with 20 different countries. Start small and then build from there. So start with one destinations, two destinations, and then from there, you can always build as you go along. But at the very beginning, you don't have to focus on 20 different destinations. So make sure that you're focusing your time very wisely and that you're not spreading yourself too thin. And this is the last point I'll cover in this video and why I see some medical tourism facilitators fail, and that's marketing. Some medical tourism facilitators, when they're first starting out, they don't know how to get in front of their target audience and market their company in an affordable way. And what I mean by this is because they don't understand medical tourism and how to market a medical tourism agency, they spend a lot of marketing dollars on avenues that don't bring in additional business. And this comes down to the education of the founder. You need to understand how to market a medical tourism agency and how to get in front of your target audience and what your target audience is looking for when they go online and they're researching medical tourism. Once you find out what customers are looking for online and how to get in front of those customers, you can effectively spend your marketing dollars and grow your business and have a more effective marketing campaign. But there are other mistakes that I've seen people make when they get into the medical tourism sector that contribute to why they don't succeed. And I didn't cover all of them today. I just want to give you guys some, and I may come at a later date and give you guys more, but make sure you avoid these pitfalls and these mistakes. And if you got value from this video, please take a second to like it as well as to subscribe to the channel. But thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.